Hello and welcome, Devil Sniper here, and this is episode number 7 of our career mode with Portsmouth on FIFA 13. If you missed the previous episode, please take a moment to go back, just have a watch of it. Episode 6 is action-packed with goals and um, some some real luck. Some real luck in, uh, in our favour for once, not in the favour of EA, which is really, really nice. And it's part of Double Upload Sunday, so if you have missed that, there will be a link... Uh, in a description or an annotation on the screen for you to click just to go back and have a watch because it really is a cracking episode. But anyway, let's go on with episode number seven. And Leget just played a cracking ball through to our right back who's getting forward, marauding forward such <laughs> so early. And he looked knackered to be fair, which is uh, a little bit worrying. And he's, he's struggling to track back. But got to say, playing against Sheffield United, they're, they're just above us in the league. They're playing really good football. They're a hard side to play against. I've, I've seen them play against uh, Colchester United uh, about a month ago. I think it was a month or six weeks ago. And they were a solid side. That was a 1-1 draw. And um, to be fair, you know, Sheffield United were an absolute solid side. Really powerful and play with great, great passion. So I knew this was going to be a hard game. And as you can see, we're, de we're defending quite stoutly. We're getting in the way. We're cutting down on the errors just about cutting down on the errors but it does help when you've got Anderson in goal who just is an absolute tank it's so great to have a keeper that you can rely on behind you because I do make a few defensive errors as you can see there I mean Thompson makes it a bit of a rash challenge but Anderson still cleared up the opportunity and it was his second yellow card I felt that was a bit harsh but on the replay I, I suppose you could say he did kick him in the throat from a sliding tackle which is um which is quite epic, to be fair. In all fairness, that is quite an epic challenge. And uh, I guess, rightly so, he was booked and sent off. But Lucas picks the ball up. He cuts inside. And look at that. Wow. That guy has a cultured left foot. Absolute cultured left foot. With ten men, nine minutes to go. He picks the ball up on the right-hand side of the penalty box. Cuts inside and has the audacity to stick that in the bottom corner. Look at that. Great power and position. The keeper's view was blocked by uh, by our by our attacking player and also his, his defender, to be fair. So uh, that probably came as a bit of a surprise. And it was Leget that was getting his ass in the way. Well played, Sebastian. Well played, my son. And uh, yes, full-time, 1-0 victory to us. And the great thing about that is away from home. We've actually picked up some points away from home. As you would have seen in the last episode, you know, getting a draw away to Walsall, who are bottom of the league, is really not acceptable. And really disappointing, you know, that they're the things we've got to cut out. The teams in the bottom half of the table, the teams 15th and below, we've really got to capitalise and beat. You know, we can't afford to, to, to slip up and, and drop points away from home. I know it's going to be harder, but we can't rely on our home form. But that all aside, looking at the table, after 10 games, are you guys happy? I personally am. I think we've done really well. I think five wins, three draws, two losses... Uh, plus three in the goal difference, and you know we, we're a, 19, 20, 20, a win away from being top of the league. A win away from being top of the league. I think that's really impressive. I'm really, really happy with that. I think we've come a long way. And as you can see, Tony Watt, who's out for four weeks, is 14th in the goal scoring chart. You know, four goals already to his name. He's going to be a big miss. He really, really is going to be an absolute huge miss for us personally because he is a phenomenal player. He feels so much better than he is. He feels so more cultured than his actual statistics say, which fill me full, full of joy because I feel he's going to grow into a fantastic player. And I really want to finish in a decent position in this league so we can go and actually buy... Legette. It'll be nice to buy Legette. It'll be nice to buy Tony Watt. It'll be nice to buy Taylor. But on top of that, we've got a lot of financial things to worry about as 98% as of our players are on a one-year deal as it is, which is really frustrating. And we're going to need a big, a big, 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 big budget from the, uh, the board to not only keep those players, but to keep going next season, which is um, a little bit worrying, but we'll see how that goes. As long as we do the business on the park, we should be okay. And Preston came out, I mean, this is only the fifth minute, and they're absolutely tearing us a new arsehole. They're absolutely playing fantastic. If it weren't for their player getting getting his ass in the way, we could have been 1-0 uh, down early doors, which is really frustrating. A great shot there, but just off target. And, and we were forcing it. We were, we, were, we were trying to force the game, which is, which is something you shouldn't do and um, something I don't recommend doing. But look at that from Lucas. Oh, my days. 
the boy just impresses me more and more. Now, I, I would say his left foot reminds me of Ryan Giggs, and his right foot is just a little bit of a standing foot, until he knocks in a goal like that, and you think to yourself, wow, this boy is going to be something special. I mean, great turn back inside, onto his right foot, doesn't lack the confidence, nor the ability to have the shot, and that was really fantastic. But as I was talking about forcing a game, there you go. That is that is really, really awful. Nothing really on. Play, not play negative football, but use your use your brain. Turn back. You know you don't have to always go forward. I didn't do that. I gave the ball away absolutely needlessly. Commit to an early challenge. Allows Proctor time. He turns inside and he sticks the ball in the bottom corner. And that's all because of of my error, of my lack of judgment, and my inability just to calm the play down, slow the play down, turn back knock the ball to a, to a player who actually is on instead of just knocking it forward into a, a world of pain and when you do that you get punished so we went in at half time 1-1 and I was really really disappointed I felt that you know we'd weathered the, the first 10 minutes of uh, Preston coming at us at 100 miles an hour and actually causing us a great deal of, of, of problems and they really stretched us and I felt we got into we got into the lead in the 32nd minute we should have we should have kept going but we didn't and that was down to my fault and that really allowed them back into the game Lucas tried his absolute heart out, and uh, a great shot was just over. But it, you know, Paul, um, Preston kept us to them sort of opportunities, which was frustrating. Again, some nice football. Again, we're forced to take a long shot. Great save by their keeper, and a 1-1 draw at home is not really acceptable. But at the end of the day, the only positive I can take out of this game is we didn't lose. You know, if we have to take draws over losses, I think you know we'd all be happy with the with the draws and getting a point, gaining a point. Now, a point is better than nothing. It's better than a kick in the teeth at the end of the day. As much as it's really, really super, super, super frustrating, absolutely frustrating. But we've now got a cup game against Oxford, and luckily it's at home, so we've got an opportunity to put the rights. The wrong's right, I should say, from uh, from the Preston game and uh, gain some confidence. Because we do need some confidence. And I really do feel we're struggling at this moment in time without Tony Watt. Um, we don't have many choices up front. So I put in Luke Rogers in the hope that... You now, I've got to rest some of our bigger players, some of our, some of our younger players, and um, rotate them. And as you can see, I was not concentrating at the start of this game, which is really, really <laughs> a stupid thing to be doing, allowing the opposition straight on to us. But it's okay. I managed to uh, to regain the controller and uh, sort it out. But you know, the lack of concentration there could have uh, could have uh, put us one nil down, which is really disgraceful. Oxford were really solid at the back. Great defensive tackle there. But then Rogers picks the ball up and unleashes, unleashes as if to say, "I can score for you, boss. I am here. You don't have to worry." While Tony's out. I will do the business for you. And that was an absolute cracking finish. It really was. It took me by completely by surprise, to be honest. It was a great piece of football. Nuget is, is all over the place. You know, he, he's such a great player. But I tell you what, Rogers has an equal right foot. That's a hammer blow. Absolute hammer blow. Really is a hammer blow. And there was me thinking Sebastian Legette's right foot was an absolute hammer. But then we pick up the ball from a free kick, knocks it into Russell. Now, the one thing that amazes me about this piece of play, Howard, who's playing in place of Legette, because I wanted to rest him, chips the ball over, and who is that? Who was that? John Harley. Our left back was sitting in the 18 yard box and has the audacity to knock home a right foot volley. Yes, a right foot volley. That is a cultured finish. Look at this great chip ball. Bang. That is, that is a classy finish. Absolutely classy finish. Again, took me so by surprise. I was really astounded. We have a little bit of a long-range effort. The referee gives a penalty. Now, I rewound this now. Look at it. The actual defender tries to do like a, a scissor kick clearance, and it doesn't strike him on the arm. It sort of strikes his boot and his stomach, and uh, for some reason it's awarded as a penalty. But anyway, Rogers had the confidence to step up. He hits it with some great pace, but my God, no accuracy whatsoever. And on the brink of half-time, we could have been and should have been 3-0 up. And we went in 2-0 up, which is not too bad. You know, I can't take take too much away from the lads. But missing another penalty is really just not acceptable. We've really got to uh, to sort that out and capitalise on such opportunities and t make sure we take them. Make sure we take them. But thankfully, we again have Anderson in goal, who just seems to be an unbelievable tank. 
And that's the way the game finished 2-0. Nothing really exciting happened in the second half apart from that save. Which again, he seriously is a tank of a goalkeeper. He really is a tank of a goalkeeper. And to finish this episode, we get some absolutely amazing news. Tony Watt can rejoin the first team. That is absolutely fantastic and a huge weight of my mind. Be great to get him back in the side, but it'll be a few weeks before he probably plays. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed Double Upload Sunday, and uh, I'll catch you during a week for some more cracking episodes. Catch you later, guys. (laughs)